Hello and what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B and today we're working on clue number eight with our Olympia puzzle mystery quilt from Cotton Cuts. I am working with the fabric line Nadia. I love this fabric so much. It's such a cute little um, Christmas print. I'm so excited to get this done. So this is a little town by Amy Simbaldi and, uh, for art gallery fabrics and I just love it. So materials I always use is the color card, which tells us what fabric we have assigned to what letter. I've got all of my pieces here, my instructions that we'll be following. And today I'll tell you, I did a little pre-sewing. We're gonna try a different kind of filming style. I did a little pre-sewing and uh, we are gonna be making this block right here. And uh, so we're gonna be making a second one. So let's go ahead and get started. I will, I always kind of set my color card up at the top uh, just so it's still visible but not in the way and then I'll put my instructions to the side here. So to start uh, we are actually going to take some of our squares here. Uh, my Fabric D is this really cute little uh, present with a, a bow sort of situation, this ribbing, ribboning. I love that. So we're going to take that. That's a fabric D and then we're going to take a fabric E square and we're just going to sew those two together here. So sew these together. All right. And what it says is to press toward our fabric D. So what I'll do is I will set our seam and then I will open this up and press with our um, seam going the opposite direction towards fabric D. All right, and you should make four of these units total. So there's one, so you'll need to make three more, okay? I have already made a second one here. And what we're gonna do here is have D and E and then we're gonna flip the next two. E will be on the left and D will be on the right. We're gonna take those and because our seams, because we pressed with the directions, our seams are going opposite way. So this top one is going this direction, this bottom one is going this direction. Flip it over and we're gonna nest those seams together. So what that means is we will sandwich those together just like that, right sides together. So this seam is going this direction, this seam is going this direction. They just kind of click together. I like to line up my fabric edge here. I always keep my thumb on those center seams that are nested together and that way they don't go anywhere. Okay, and I'll stop about halfway through and make sure my bottom squares are lined up together. Pull that off, set this seam, and we are going to press toward the bottom. So I'll pull this back, finger press, and then press on top of that with the iron. And that's our square right there. We're gonna set that to the side. Now I'm gonna work with a large fabric A triangle, which again, we've got our laser cut, so we're not gonna to need to do any clipping or anything like that. Then we need two smaller F triangles, just like this. So our fabric A should be pointing up and our fabric Fs are going to complete a flying geese unit. So we'll take the left side, right sides together, take that over to the sewing machine. This is on the bias, so you wanna make sure not to pull or, or push this through the machine, just let it glide through easily. Press that. And the arrow is pointing out towards fabric F, so we'll be sure to do that. Now attach the right side, right sides together, matching up all three sides, sewing on the bias. Press 
press that seam, open it up toward F. Now this is on the bias, so you wanna be extra gentle with it. I just kind of walk it down. Okay, so we've got a flying geese unit. You need four of these total. Once you've got those made, we're actually gonna take and flip it over. So our fabric A is pointing downward. We are going to take a fabric A square and attach it to the end here. So with that being said, I just put right sides together, make sure my fabric A is pointing down. Take this over to the machine. Press that. And I kind of feel a little bumpiness under here, so I want to make sure that that is nice and pressed down. And then our arrow, when I say our arrow, our arrows here are telling us which way to press. So here is our step that we're on, and it's telling us to press towards that fabric A square. So what that means is that our seam will be going this direction. So I'll open that up, finger press and then press with the iron, and that's a unit that we're making. So now, what is easy about this is we're gonna make two of those, but then we should have some flying geese units left over that don't have anything attached to them. So, we'll take our original. Now, something that I would suggest doing here is when you lay this out, because we're gonna use this in our next step, when you lay this out, double check your color card. This is my fabric, D, this is my fabric E, this is my fabric E, and this, so you wanna make sure it's laying in the right order. And we're gonna take the flying geese unit that does not have a square attached to the end, and we are going to attach it to this side with our fabric E pointing in towards our four block. So I'll put right sides together. And what you can do is you can stick a pin in the very corner um, I'm sorry, the very point of our flying geese and attach it into the seam of our other unit. Take that over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter of an inch. Okay, we're gonna set that seam and our arrow is pointing in. So what that will mean is we want to our seam going this direction. So we'll flip open and press. And what that looks like is that our seam here is going this direction. So that's what the arrows are for. You're gonna make two of these units that look just like this. Now our last step is to attach this flying geese unit with the A square at the end. And this is going to make the corner of what looks like maybe a granny square block. So our fabric A is pointing down, our fabric A square is in the center. So I will put right sides together, and if we've done our pressing with the instructions, these two should nest together here. So just like that, line up your other edges. I would stop a little bit on the way here and line everything up. Stop a little bit, line up again. Now, if you're more comfortable using uh, pins, absolutely do so. Do what you are comfortable with. Okay, we want to press, set our seams first. Then press with our seam, not actually going this direction. We need to flip it and go the other direction. So what I do is flip it this way and then roll it back like this. Finger press that. 
And some of these points might be a little more bulky. So you just have to be gentle. Your fabric will go what direction you would like it to. You just have to train it. All right, and just like that, this is what your block for this clue number eight should look like. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to comment below and I can help you walk through that. So by the end of this clue, you should have two that are looking the exact same for clue number eight. Thank you so much for joining us in the hive today and you have a wonderful week.